Can you see anything? I don't know. It's a cave. Tonight just had a little baby brother or sister. Here it is, the RTX 4080. Tough from ASUS. Let's take a look. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out Who Keys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. So let's have a look what's inside the box. Now, I don't have the 4090 TUF on hand, so I can't compare it exactly to the TUF. Uh, but I can't remember if it's the same size. Three pin cable rather than the four pin cable. Tough gaming cable management, GPU sack racket, and a screwdriver. It's the same as on the 4090 Tough. Are we gonna get the graphics card as well or not? Certificate of reliability. If anyone's collecting graphics cards, there you go. 13.7 millimeters wide. 34.8 centimeters long and 7.4 centimeters deep. If you've seen the 4080 unboxing, then it looks very, very similar. This is the OC version, so RTX 4080 O16G gaming. Two BIOS switches here, performance and quiet. Three display ports and two HDMI ports. And I don't think these HDMI ports are separate, so I don't think you can connect five displays to it. I think you can still connect four displays. It's just to give you extra HDMI port if you don't have that many display cables or something like that. Now, I don't have the 2490 to compare, but I've got a Soltac RTX 4090 to compare, and they look very, very similar. And there's also MSI Gaming X RTX 4090 and as you can see they're all very very similar size it doesn't look like one is bigger than the other one the only thing i notice here is that the msi and zotac are three slots in the back whereas the asus is two even though you could fit the third one in there it's not there interestingly here asus has taken the pass through very very serious seriously where zotac and msi kind of show you the thing that, oh yeah, it's, uh, you know, coming through as well. Asus has cut basically a big hole in the back, as you can see. Like the pass-through of this is completely, the last fan is just for pass-through. So I expect the thermals for this to be incredibly good. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk about the performance. So, finally I've had the time to put this 4080 through its paces and actually test it how good it is. I had to talk to my ASUS contact and basically this cooler is exactly the same as 4090. So if you get the 4090 Tuff, the outside is exactly the same. The same cooler has been slapped on, just the board is different with obviously 4090 specs and so on. So the actual design difference, there's no difference there. We're not gonna be comparing this with 3080 or 3080 Ti because these GPUs right now go further lower in the price range. So I wanna compare this to 4090 because you wanna know how much worse is it compared to 4090 and to 3090, which is actually roughly around the same price point what you would get this right now. And especially creators who compare this to the 3080 Ti or 3090, which roughly go at the same price right now, then the 3080 Ti has less VRAM, which is a big deal for 3D creators or even video editors and so on. So let's have a look at the specs here. Compared to the 4090 and 3090, the RTX 4080 has the least amount of CUDA cores. The 4090 has 68% more CUDA cores and the 3090 has 7.9% more CUDA cores. And the same with TMUs, tensor cores and RT cores. The memory type is exactly the same as well, GDDR6X. 
but obviously the 48 it has 16 gigabytes compared to the 24 gigabytes on the 90 versions of the cards the memory bus bandwidth is a bit lower as well 256 bit and the memory bandwidth is 716.8 which is 42% faster in the 1490 and 30% faster in the 3090. The bus interface is exactly the same across the board and the TDP or TGP is 320 watts on the 4080, 450 watts on the 4090 and 350 watts on the 1390. When talking about the power consumption, I do want to mention that interestingly, this 4090 has three 8-pin PCIe connectors, whereas the 1390 has two, which is just interesting. The 1390 uses actually more power than the 4080, but needs less PCIe 8-pin connectors. Maybe it's because the newer cards don't draw any power through the PCIe, but only through the actual these. I'm not sure, I've heard something like that, but don't quote me on that. But just interesting observation. In terms of price now, the MSRP for the you know, founder's edition of the 4080 is $1,200. The 4090 is $1,600, which is 33% more or $400 more. The RTX 3090 was launched at $1,500, but right now you can get it between $1,200 to $1,500, something like that. Right now I'm seeing a little bit of a spike up again in the prices because the 3090s were going close to $1,000, but now they've raised in value again. Now I'm not sure how much is the 4080 brand boards or the Asus Tough one going to go there. So I highly recommend you check out the pricing in the description below so you can actually measure, you know, what the current pricing for you is at the time of watching this video. So you can really see if the performance gain is worth the price gain, if you know what I mean. In terms of the test bench setup, I'm using the i7-12700 CPU, Asus B660 Creator D4 motherboard, 2 times 32 gigabytes Kingston Fury Beast RGB 3600 MHz CL18. The cooler is Deep Cool Castle 360 EX White. The case is Fantix P600S without panels, so it's basically open air test bench. The SSD is Samsung 980 Pro 1 terabyte, and the power supply is Asus ROG Thor 1200 watt. Now I do want to make a very important note over here as well. A lot of the photo and video editing applications, especially After Effects and Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve, I am massively limited to the CPU. So there's a huge CPU bottleneck. And the reason is that because I don't have another test setup over here. AMD or Intel want to help me out? I'm happy to do that. But right now, I'm going to have to deal with this. In 3D editing applications, we don't have that CPU bottleneck really or the benchmarks, but it's just more for photo and video editing applications, just so you know. Which basically means that if you've got a better CPU like a 12700K, 13700K, Ryzen 7900X or 7950X, then the GPU score will be actually better and the GPU score will be more improved. But it will be improved on both of the cases as well. So there's that as well. First of all, power draw consumption. And this is on Fermark where it's 100% utilized, very, very kind of synthetic uh, benchmark, maybe more for gamers and uh, that's more relevant. But the 4080, I'm seeing a max power draw of 305 watts, which is interesting. It's 15 watts below the TGP, which usually we see it hit on Fermark. The RTX 4090 is using 450 watts of power there, using 47% more power. And the RTX 3090 Tough, by the way, these are all Tough cards that I'm comparing here, Tough, tough OC, by the way, as well, is 350 watts, which is 14% more power. In terms of GPU temperatures, this 4080 is the lowest in the mix. And as you can see, the ambient is the highest as well, where we would usually see higher kind of um, temps there but it's just because we've got exactly the same cooler as 4090 but we're drawing much less power so the card is running extremely cool no worries about overheating there now geekbench 5 in cuda scores the 4090 is 40% better in open seal score 33.4 percent better and in vulcan score 5.1 percent better the rtx 3090 is 17 percent slower in the cuda scores 17.5 percent in open seal scores and 26.2 percent slower in the vulcan scores so interestingly we're actually performing better than the 3090 in this application. Moving on to Photoshop and video editing, 
Whereas generally here, you don't really see that big of a difference between these graphics cards. And if you're a photographer, I wouldn't recommend using these things, especially in Adobe Lightroom, where I'm literally every card that I'm testing there performs within the margin of error. So I don't recommend that. But in here, we've seen a slight GPU increase, 0.7% as the 4090, but the 3090 is 2.3% slower. So there is a little bit of a gain, but nothing that would be actually worth it for the photographers. Moving on to Premiere Pro. And here we can see that the 4090 in overall score is about 14% faster and standard overall about 13% faster. And the RTX 3090 is about 7% faster and about 1% faster in the standard and extended overall scores. But interestingly, when we're looking at the GPU score here, we're not that much different. The 4090 is about 14% better, but the 3090 is only 2.5% better here uh, compared to the 4080. But interestingly, if you look at the standard export score here of the 4080, we can see that it's 90.6 points compared to the 88.6 points on the RTX 3090, which is probably due to the encoders. And I wanna take a moment here to talk about the encoders of the 4080 here. The encoders there are exactly the same as on the 4090. In fact, the encoders will be the same on all of the 40 series cards, unless Nvidia does some kind of weird magic, but really, they're all exactly the same. And for video creators, in terms of exporting, it's gonna be a huge thing. Now, I've gotten a little bit more in detail about the encoders in the 1490 video. So I highly recommend you go check that out because I don't want to repeat myself too much and you'll find much more information about there. But it does support AV1 encoding and there's two encoders in there, which will mean that if you're exporting video in, in Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve or something like that to H.264 or 5, there's two encoders which can work together. They split the frame in half. One encoder renders the top part, one of them bottom part and then later on in the video, boom, they split them together, where you can cut your export times up to half, but that is for certain codecs and for certain systems. I didn't see it that much, but I did see a huge increase between those two encoders. According to my testing, I'm seeing about 20%, but obviously it depends also on the codecs. But here again, I do want to mention, don't fall into all of the marketing. You have to really see which codecs and which export settings you're using, because some of them, they don't, kind of scale linearly exactly the same. So these export times are with certain codec settings on the exports, but if you can switch to these, um, you know, settings and maybe it doesn't matter, for example, if you're uploading just somewhere online or something, but sometimes you do have some kind of restrictions and limitations on what codecs and what, you know, format you need to export this, then you might not see this type of increase, but you will see an increase. Regarding decoders, they're exactly the same on 30 and 40 series, so you're not going to see better timeline playback with certain codecs because they use the same decoders basically. Now looking at After Effects, the 1490 is about 1.9% faster than the 3080. The GPU score is about 8% faster there and the 3090 is about 2% faster in the overall scores and about 4.7% faster in the GPU score. So in here I'm seeing a massive CPU bottleneck and I highly recommend you like upgrading your CPU first here before you upgrade a GPU in this application because it's not so GPU kind of accelerated as you might think. But I think that's interesting case as well for a lot of the creators who are wondering, oh, should I get a better GPU? Then depending on your application, you might be better off upgrading the CPU, not the GPU. Even the GPU upgrade would be much easier. The CPU upgrade will give you much more performance than the actual GPU upgrade. But it depends on your workflow. I'm trying to help you here. Now DaVinci Resolve, and that's a program that loves to use a lot of GPU and different things and accelerates a lot of things on GPU. You can see that the 4090s are 13.8% faster in the extended overall score and about 11.7% faster in the standard overall score. The 3080 now here is about 6% slower in the extended overall score and the same in about standard overall score. The GPU effects are 25% faster than the 1490 and about 12% slower on the 3090. So very impressive performance here on the 4080. Moving on to 3D where we can really see these GPUs run and see how fast they really go. 
So the 1490 is about 42% faster in the CUDA scores and about 36% faster in the RTX scores. The 1390 here now, interestingly, is 27% slower in the CUDA scores and 30% slower in the RTX scores, which is a huge performance gain. Looking at Blender, the 1490 is about 24 to 27% faster in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes. The 3090 is between 30 to 42 percent slower in those exact same scenes which is just impressive performance of the 4080. And looking at Octane Bench we can see that the 4090 is 32 percent faster and the 3090 is about 30 percent faster in overall scores. Now another huge thing that has changed between these uh, generations is the actual node. So basically the 30 series are on the eight nanometer node and now this one is on the four nanometer, which basically equates the better power efficiency for the cards. So we're gonna look at that now. So in these following charts, what you can see is the power efficiency per watt. And I measured the 3D applications here, Blender, the monster scene, Octobench and V-Ray what's the average wattage consumed during the benchmark load to really see like how much does it use. Interestingly, neither of the cards really hit 100% of its TGP at these benchmarks and we can really see the 100% draw only in some of the games. You can see some of the gamer reviews in some of the other channels. But here, even at Blender and Octobench and V-Ray, I'm not seeing the 100% utilization hit the GGP. What you can see is that the 4090 is using about 37% more power in the Blender scene about 33% more power in the Octobench and about 33.5% more in the V-Ray benchmark. The 1390 is using 78% more power in the monster scene in Blender, 69% more power in the Octobench and about 46% more power in V-Ray. When we are looking at the average performance per watt calculation, then we can see that the 4080 is more power efficient than the 4090. The 4090 is between 44 to 6.6% .6 actually lower than the 4080, but the 3090 is horrendously less power efficient. About 58 to 68 percent lower power efficiency which is just insane. As you can see we're getting more than double the power efficiency in Blender compared to the 3090 which is just insane. So the power efficiency of the 4080 is absolutely amazing. So if you're looking at the card can, that can outperform the 3090, consume much less power when you're doing rendering as a creator then this is an amazing amazing card for you. In pretty much all of the applications here especially in 3D we can see that the 4080 is a better card than the 3090, but there's a huge, huge caveat as well, which is the VRAM. We only have, only, have 16 gigabytes on the 4080 compared to the 24 gigabytes on the 3090, which can be actual game changer for a lot of 3D creators. So if you do need the more VRAM and you're not so bothered about power efficiency, then the 3090 might be a better pick for you. But if you're looking at something that is much more power efficient, maybe does some of the rendering in the background or overnight or something like that, then the 4080 here is an absolute insane pick for you to do these renders and do them more efficiently. If you do need the extra kind of time, uh, then the 4090 is a better, you know, faster card, but it's not as power efficient compared to this 4080. But if you are a serious 3D creator, then the 4090 might be a much better pick for you just because of the 24 gigabyte VRAM. It's still very, very power efficient, not as power efficient as this, but much more power efficient than any of the 30 series cards and performs ridiculously better in the actual 3D applications as well compared to the 4080 here. So that might be a better pick for you. But if that extra $400 or depending on this Asus Tough version could be extra $1000 is a bit hard to chew, then the 4080 might be very, very appealing for you. For video creators, Unless you're working with DaVinci Resolve, 
it's not really a big increase over the 1390 because in these applications you're not even using the GPU at 100% utilization all the time. So the power efficiency makes less and less sort of a role. But for DaVinci Resolve, especially this 4080 could be a very, very awesome pick for you. Now there is other features about the 40 series that I mentioned and went more in detail in my 4090 review. So I highly recommend you go check that out to talk about DLSS 3. There's the RT cause and why that's important for creators especially 3d creators and real-time ray tracing av1 encoding and why is that important and why this is a game changer on the 40 series as well which this feature is exactly the same as on the 4090 so in conclusion this nvidia rtx 4080 asus tough version over here who is it for i think it's a very interesting pick for 3d creators who maybe can't quite chill out the cash for a 4090 but one incredible 3d performance then this is are an insane card for you so maybe if you're on the 20 series cards or something like that then this 4080 will be a huge huge upgrade for you and to underline some of the other features that might make you choose this over the 30 series is the av1 encoding and decoding the encoders if you're doing a lot of video exporting to h264 and 5 or av1 the rendering engine there as well as the rt cores if you're working in some kind of 3d element scenes where you can actually enable real-time ray tracing that could be a game changer for you as a 3d creator if you want to pick this up check out the links and the latest pricing in the description below as well as the 3090 and 4090 just so you are aware what the pricing is so you can get the best card for you let me know what you think in the comment section below and asus you still need to fix the coordinates on the card they're wrong there's a typo in there but if you do want to build yourself a creator pc then check out the creator pc build guide in the description below there's four part series that can fit any of your budgets and just just pick the video that's closest to your budget and adjust it to your needs in the video you can see all the upgrades and downgrades so you can get the best pc for you thanks guys for watching and i'll see you next time Bye bye